Rugby Championship round number six. It's the final game for the Pumas and the Wallabies in the penultimate game of the competition itself. Uh, it's from the Gold Coast. It's, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one in terms of if the Pumas can finally get off the mark or whether the Wallabies will go four on the bounce. We'll go through the squads, uh, some of the stats, key players, predictions, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one is going to play out. The Pumas are none from five. Bottom of the log, they will finish bottom of the log. And to make matters worse, they've got six players uh, and a couple of the staff who won't even be in attendance because they were, they traveled out of New South, uh, they traveled to New South Wales out of Queensland to visit, I think it's Byron Bay, which is like a touristy hotspot. But of course, with state restrictions in, uh, in New South Wales and Queensland, it meant these guys couldn't get back. Now, some of these guys we haven't even seen throughout this tournament, like Diaz Benicia and Cancellari, could even be forgiven for forgetting these guys were part of the tournament. But um, some of them are key guys, like Medrano, Matera, uh, the reserve hooker, Cicino. So, yeah, it's um, it's such a turnaround. Like, it was just a few days ago with the, the photo shoot debacle that, um, you know, Argentina were kind of uh, on the receiving end of apologies. And this time, they're going to be making the apologies for not kind of following the restrictions that were set in place. You know, the sports teams need to be, uh, you know, dotting their I's and crossing their T's with all of this kind of stuff because they're often, um, you know, kind of given privileges in terms of travel that maybe everyday people aren't in terms of being able to skip queues and get spots in isolation, quarantine hotels and whatnot. So, um, yeah, not an ideal one in the build-up for the Pumas. The Wallabies, however... Um, you know, they've turned this tournament around really well. They went none from two against the All Blacks, which everybody has done thus far, apart from the box who were none from one, got one last chance to rectify that. But uh, yeah, the All Blacks are going for the sweep. And after those first two games, it was looking all doom and gloom, as I mentioned before. But three on the bounce, happy days for Wallabies fans, uh, for the team. Things are actually starting to look pretty rosy. So it will be, um, yeah, it'll be one where they're not going to want to take their foot off. But like I said, the Pumas... It's their last chance to get anything out of this competition. Uh, the Pumas lineup is disruptive with those guys being, um, you know, outside of the, the state, so not part of the squad. They've gone with uh, Martinez, Montoya, and Pieretto as the front row. So Martinez uh, replaces Gijena, and um, Medrano is replaced by Pieretto. So, I mean, Medrano played a lot of minutes with... Um, uh, with the last couple of rounds, so it's it's uh, yeah concerning one that Pieretto uh, has to start, but a good chance for him, I guess, if nothing else. Montoya has been consistent and very good, uh, so it's kind of good that he wasn't uh, absent from the squad. Petty gets a start ahead of Alemano, so Alemano drops to the bench. Lavanini is still there, so the locking stocks are still kind of at full 100% status. Um, Gonzalez, Crema, and Bruni are the back row, so obviously Matera being out means Bruni comes back into number eight. But he's been good. I think he was out injured a couple of weeks ago. But if he's back fit, that's fantastic news for the Pumas. I've really been impressed by Gonzalez. Uh, his line-out work, I think, was pretty disruptive last week. So he'll be looking to continue on in that area. Plus his work rate, you know, um, with his tackles and whatnot. Bertrand and Carreras are 9-10. I don't even think Bertrand got subbed last week. I think he played the full 80. And uh, Carreras has tended to play 75. And then Miotti comes on for a wee... Um, a cameo at the end, and Carreras maybe shifts to fullback. So, yeah, Carreras has actually been good. I was a little bit doubtful when he first got selected because I know him mainly as a winger. But at 10, I think he's been really good. He's been putting in big tackles. He puts his body on the line. He's been putting in good carries. He kicks pretty well. Um, obviously, he's still got a bit of development to go, but if he is going to be a 10, there's no better way to learn your craft than to get minutes in the number 10 jumper. So he gets them again. Uh, Choco Buddies and Sinti is 12 and 13, so no changes there. Uh, Boffelli, Moroni, and Malia are the back three. So Moroni comes in for Cadero. The other two guys are kind of steady as she goes. Expect Boffelli to do the goal kicking again. Uh, the bench is where there's a few more changes. Bosch comes in for Cicino. Again, he's one of the six guys who's out. Um, Gallo, I don't know him. Thomas Gallo and Eduardo Bello, the two replacement props. I don't know. Gallo is the guy who's got an asterisk next to his name in the official comms to say he's on his debut. I don't remember Bello playing for the Pumas either, but somebody tell me when he did. I can't remember him, but um, there you go. So two new props on the bench. It may be an area where the, the, uh, the, the Wallabies guys look to target. Alemano. Uh, Gorison is on the bench. It's good to see him. I don't think we've seen him since maybe Romania. 
It's been a while since he's played, but he's uh, another kind of high work rate guy. Uh, Gonzalo Garcia is the replacement halfback. Miotti, like I mentioned, and Mateo Carreras on the bench as well. So hopefully Gonzalo Garcia gets some minutes. I always feel bad for guys that ride the pine for the 80. Like if that, that game last week was locked, lost. I don't know why Bertrand had to play the 80. Give Gonzalo Garcia 10 minutes at the end. It wasn't going to be the, you know, the changing of the game. So it just seems, I don't know, bizarre kind of coaching choice. Uh, for the Wallabies, a few changes. Marika Corambetti has had to go uh, and leave the squad for um, from some family commitments. So that means he's kind of one of their key regulars who is out of the team. Uh, but the front row is unchanged. It's Slipper, Fienga, and Tupo. Like I mentioned, they'll try to put pressure on this much-changed uh, Pumas front row. Rodder and Swain has... Um, I mean, the, the, the second row for the Wallabies has kind of been shifting one guy. Since Salakai Lotto uh, did his family thing, it's kind of been Rodder, Swain, and um, Philip kind of alternating. So that continues this time. It's Swain's turn to get a chance. And Philip is the guy on the bench. Rodder's the consistent one. Uh, Pete Samu gets reward for some good form. He started at number six, and uh, Dave Rennie did kind of talk up his form in the press conference, so he didn't say Rob Leona did anything wrong, but um, he's the guy who's kind of out of the 23. So, I don't know. If your coach doesn't say you did anything wrong, but the other guy did a lot right, maybe you can kind of read into that what you would, but I mean, Leona's only had the one start, so he'll be looking to grow. I think Dave did mention him getting some time on the Northern Tour, so we'll see. Uh, Hooper's still at seven, Valtini's still at eight. Uh, White and Cooper is the 19 combo. They've resisted the urge to switch out James O'Connor for Quade Cooper, but uh, Jock is still on the bench. Uh, Karevi and Ikitao has been a phenomenal midfield combo, and that continues. Uh, Callaway shifts to cover Corambetti's absence on the left wing. Callaway has been a phenomenon as well. Uh, Pitaya gets his chance on the right wing. Um, Rennie was talking a wee bit about him um, you know, getting his work rate up a little bit. Uh, so we'll be interested to see what he can do with the start because he's kind of not been with the start for a while. Uh, Hodge is there at fullback. The bench is Lonergan, who's back into the squad uh, in place of Katu'u. I think Katu'u is a wee bit hard done by. He's been he's been really good for the limited minutes he's got, but I mean, Lonergan needs to get some time as well. Uh, Gus Bell is still there. Greg Holmes. Goodness gracious me. that That's one of the players who's actually older than me on the field at 38 years old. He's still a couple of months older than me. So congratulations to him. First time back in Wallabies camp for a long time. I uh, hope he goes well. But Dave Rennie said it's not a sentimental selection. He's there to do a job because um, Potne Fa'a uh, is out. So um, yeah, they need him to do a job. So fair enough. Uh, Matt Phillip, like I mentioned, Sean McMahon is the other one. Um, there was a little bit of talk about that was a surprise selection. I mean, there was a surprise initially when McMahon was back in the squad, but... If you're going to bring him back into the squad, you needed to give him some game time, surely. So he's going to get a game, which is really great to see him back in Aussie rugby as well. Uh, Jake Gordon's also back. Tate McDermott has a rest. Uh, we haven't seen Gordon since the French series. Um, O'Connor, like I mentioned, and Tom Wright comes in. Haven't seen him for a wee while too. So it's a good chance for some guys who have, um, have been observing for a while to actually get their hands on the ball show us what they can do so i mean statistically there's been some areas of concern for both sides like i mentioned the aussie line out was under a wee bit of pressure last week i think it was 11 from 15 uh whereas the pumas one was um 11 from 13 which is still not fantastic but it's a couple of lost line outs better anyway than the um than the aussie one like i mentioned juan martin gonzalez was one of the disruptive figures in that one but man you look at the ball and hand stuff and that's when the aussie guys are, are just lighting it up man 606 run meters to 215 from the Pumas. That's not pretty reading. Uh, 10 clean breaks to nil, also not pretty reading. You look at Callaway, man. Callaway had 109 run meters. Remember, the Pumas had 215 as a team. Uh, three clean breaks and beat five defenders. The guy has been awesome. Um, I can't imagine switching him to the left wing will do him any harm. He's going to be good either wing you play him on, but he's certainly big boots to fill uh, in terms of Corambetti. Uh, for the Pumas, the one guy who actually looked kind of dangerous ball in hand was uh, the midfielder, Sinti. He had six defenders beaten. Um, enough run meters to be getting four, but still not like 100. But I mean, uh, his contribution was, was more than most anyway. They seem to be lacking a bit of that go forward ball. Um, interestingly, I looked at the Pumas stats and like, the games they were winning, like the second game against Wales this year, albeit Wales without their British and Irish Lions, or if you look back to the game last year against the All Blacks where they won, 
They kind of controlled the position in the territory, which is not the way all teams play. Some teams prefer to live without the ball. And they don't mind, you know, being in their own half as long as they can kind of cut loose. Look at the All Blacks. They cut you to bits from kind of turnover ball. But in recent weeks, they've been starved of position. And uh, they've been really struggling. So how many times have we seen the Pumas guys kind of camped in their own half just making tackle after tackle? It's been a bit too much of that. But, I mean, I don't know the easy fix for that. The, the technical kicking, obviously, it's hard to replace Sanchez in that regard. But, yeah, they, they need their hands on the ball. And they need some guys who are going to get them some go for. They need to kick well. It's, it's kind of easier said than done. That being said, man, the Aussie defense has tackled at 90 plus percent for three weeks in a row. Both games against South Africa and the first game against Argentina. And that's more than the All Blacks got in the kind of equivalent three games. So that kind of puts that into context. The Aussie guys are defending phenomenally well. They're shutting teams down. Absolutely. Um, recent history between the sides. So... Uh, it's it's all the, the Wallabies way now. Like the, the last week, I would have said there was one Pumas win. Well, if we look at the last five, the oldest of those five games last week was the Pumas win. So the Pumas win is now off the board. The last five is three Aussies wins and uh, and the two draws. Last week's game being 27 points to eight. Pretty comfortable, like I mentioned, for the Wallabies. Uh, average score being 24-17 to the Wallabies. So kind of relatively comfortable. But, um, yeah, eight points that the, the Pumas scored against the Wallabies last week was the lowest they'd scored against the Wallabies, I think, since 2003. Generally, they put on more than eight points. So, as I'm talking about ball in hand, it was particularly uh, disappointing. But fingers crossed, with their backs to the wall and nothing really to lose, the Pumas can kind of show us something. I don't know, but um, like I said, the Wallabies are having a bit of a renaissance at the moment. So, uh, good on them. Um, as chuffed as anybody to see Aussie rugby doing well. So yeah, we'll see how things go. Uh, the Aussies are favourites. The bookies are saying uh, Australia by 15 points. The rugby forecast algorithm is saying by 12. But um, either way, it should be a bit of fun. You guys let me know your thoughts. How do you think this one's going to go? Is it going to be the Wallabies to kind of um, finish second pretty comfortably with that sweep of both South Africa and Argentina? Or can you see Argentina kind of backed into a corner, a bit of extra pressure on them with these six guys getting themselves into trouble? And, um, you know, maybe they can show us something different. You guys have any thoughts? And I will talk to you again soon. See you later.